10 wrestlers WWE fire, but want it back after they got bigger. Now, did the check get bigger? That's my question, but let's watch. Being released from <laughs> WWE can be the end of a dream for many wrestlers. The majority of wrestlers work their entire careers to get to WWE, and it can all come to an end with one phone call. For some wrestlers, mm -hmm. they don't see their release as a bad thing. They ultimately see it as an opportunity to better themselves. Over the years, certain wrestlers have been released from WWE and worked endlessly to improve every aspect of the wrestling persona. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers WWE fired, but mm -hmm. one of them back because they got even bigger. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Jinder Mahal. The initial WWE run of Jinder Mahal didn't exactly light the world on fire, so it wasn't exactly a surprise when he was released in 2014. Over the next two mm. years, Mahal worked on the independent scene, but he notably put a ton of effort into his conditioning and he managed to get into the best shape of his life. WWE eventually re-signed him in 2016 and within a few short months, Mahal would go from jobber to main eventer. Mahal will discuss the impact of his 2014 release on an appearance of After the Bell and this is what the former WWE champion had to say. I don't think that's ever happened before where someone was released and came back and within that short of a time span completely changed and reinvented myself just the confidence, the swagger, the Singh brothers the entire package in the presentation. Yeah, I really transformed myself into a champion and that's what you have to do. You have to become the champion before you become the champion. I learned that no one stays down forever. You work hard and you believe in yourself and that's the main thing. If you believe in yourself, anything is possible. Unless you believe in yourself and you see yourself as champion, you're not gonna become a champion in WWE. People can see right through it. You wanna have that confidence. That's the major part of the game. I think what's neglected is the mental training. Number 9. Christian A Christian made the bold move in 2005 to turn down a new WWE contract and he was subsequently released from the company. Christian in the mm. months prior to his release had moved into the main event scene in WWE and he was receiving some of the largest crowd ovations of his entire career. Christian ultimately made the decision to sign with TNA and he was instantly presented as a credible, legitimate wrestler who was worthy of a world title. Christian's TNA run received widespread praise as he proved to the world that he was one of the most underrated wrestlers ever and he reached great heights during this run winning the NWA world title on two separate occasions. Captain Charisma finally decided to return to WWE in 2009, but this time WWE knew that Christian was a major player. Just two years after his initial run, Christian finally reached the top of WWE when he became world champion for the first time in his decorated career. Number 8. The Revival it's often said that WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, has no respect for the art of tag team wrestling, and this was most definitely felt by The Revival. The two talented stars were unhappy in WWE, so much so that they requested their release. The McMahon had come up with a bizarre new character for them, which could have completely killed any credibility the duo had, and it would turn them into a laughing stock. Eventually, WWE granted the duo their release, and this was one of the best things that could have ever happened to the tag team. The Revival would soon turn into FT and they would put on outstanding matches in every promotion they appeared in. FTR would sign for AEW and they were quickly cemented as one of the best tag teams in the world. In 2022, speculation ran rampant that WWE were potentially interested in bringing FTR back into the company. FTR had gotten themselves over to such a degree that it attracted key interest from WWE officials. Whilst FTR had fun with the rumors and often used social media to tease that they would rejoin WWE, they ultimately decided that the correct move was to re-sign with AEW. Number 7. EC3 when Derek Bateman was released from WWE in 2013, fans had little to no emotion as Bateman was barely presented on television. Being released Dang. though allowed Bateman to truly find a character that worked and being off the road would allow him to work on his conditioning and get mm. into the best shape of his life. Bateman would sign for TNA and this is when the EC3 character was born. EC3 would debut as a villainous nephew of Dixie Carter and to say that this character was entertaining would be an understatement. It was a perfect character and EC3 managed to get the character over to such a degree uh -huh. that he would win the TNA world title on multiple occasions. After a few years, he departed from TNA and re-signed with WWE using the EC3 name. Whilst this mm. run was a complete dud, it was great to see that a wrestler had managed to get themselves over in a different oh, wow, company really? with a unique character and in turn made them a valuable talent for WWE to re-sign. 
Number 6. Zack Ryder In 2020, WWE decided to release Zack Ryder from his contract after 15 years in the company. Instead of his release negatively consuming him, he would proceed to go on to a magnificent run on the independent scene using his real name, Matt Cardona. The crazy thing is, is that this run on the independent scene has become so successful that Cardona is now making more money than he was making in WWE. Cardona is an excellent example that being released from WWE isn't the end of the world and there are opportunities outside of the promotion to be successful and make money. There have been rumors that WWE yeah. are potentially interested in re-signing Cardona but with him making so much money on his own terms, what is there to gain if the former IC champion re-signs with the company? Number 5. LA Knight Whilst LA Knight is one of the most popular stars in WWE in 2023, many fans aren't aware that LA Knight had been in WWE before and had actually been released from the company. LA Knight had a run in NXT oh, wow. between 2013 to 2014 using the odd name of Slate Randall and LA was often used as an enhancement talent during this time. Following his release uh -huh. in 2014, he would work all around the world and had notable runs in Impact Wrestling and NWA using the name Eli Drake. During his decade away from WWE, LA Knight became a true master on the mic and it came as no surprise that in 2021, WWE made yeah. an offer to LA that would finally <laughs> see him return to the company. Number 4. Bobby Lashley a Bobby Lashley's 2008 release came as a huge surprise. Lashley was one of the top stars in the company and seemed like he and WWE were on good terms. According to Lashley, his release was granted so he could fight for Bellator and Strikeforce. Thankfully, he didn't abandon wrestling altogether as he had numerous runs on the independent scene as well as a run in TNA between 2009 to 2010. Mm. However, when Lashley once again opted to have another TNA run in 2014, everything changed. So Virtually overnight, Lashley became insanely good in the ring. Dude. This isn't to say that he was ever bad in the ring, but when he returned to TNA in 2014, the improvement was significant. Lashley's run particularly as a heel was outstanding and his matches with the likes of Bobby Roode, Drew McIntyre and Eric Young were tremendous. Due to the success of his TNA run, WWE decided they needed Lashley back on their roster and in 2018, Lashley returned to WWE after 10 years. This time, the TNA version of Lashley was present and since returning, he's won the WWE title on numerous occasions and has even had notable feuds with the likes of Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Number 3. Drew McIntyre at one stage, it looked like McIntyre was going to be the next big thing in Dude. WWE. Sadly, McIntyre's inaugural WWE run didn't Bro. work out the way WWE. He looks so freaking different. Like today. Like, this is what I'm used to seeing. And like, now that I'm back, it's like a totally, like, who the hell is that? It's like a totally different person. Or even McIntyre wanted, and he was released from the company in 2014. McIntyre immediately started to work independent shows and he would sign with TNA. He worked endlessly to get better in the ring and he put on a ton of muscle which made him look like a completely different wrestler. McIntyre yeah. also made the smart move to work on his character and he would even attempt to work on his promo ability and this was apparent in his TNA run as McIntyre managed to vastly improve in this department. In 2017, they decided to rehire McIntyre but this time McIntyre was everything that they initially wanted him to be. He became a top guy, achieving feats such as main eventing WrestleMania Whoa. and defeating Brock Lesnar to become WWE Champion. According to McIntyre, during an appearance on My Love Letter to Wrestling podcast, being released back in 2014 allowed him to take an honest look at himself. Number 2. Kurt Angle Kurt Angle is one of the most oh, successful perky. names WWE ever had <laughs> under contract. But in the summer of 2006, Angle had reached a point of no return. He was going through a ton of personal problems and his extensive list of injuries meant that he had developed a dangerous pill addiction. According to Angle, he literally had to beg Vince McMahon for That's his so release sad. as McMahon didn't want to lose one of his top stars. McMahon believed that Angle would be fine if he went to rehab and had a short break, but Angle knew that wouldn't fix his problems and he just needed to get out. Being granted his release was a true blessing for Angle as he would end up signing for TNA. This allowed Angle to only wrestle a few dates a month and concentrate on improving his health and well-being. And number 1. Cody Rhodes 2016 was the year in which Cody Rhodes decided to request his WWE release. Rhodes was frustrated with WWE creative and he was continuously featured on WWE superstars rather than given a meaningful role on Raw or SmackDown. 
Rhodes took a huge risk, but it ended up being one of the wisest decisions of his life. Rhodes embarked on a critically acclaimed run on the independent scene and he even had runs in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. In 2019, Rhodes along with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks announced that they would serve as executive vice presidents for a new wrestling promotion, AEW. Rhodes in the three years since his release has taken the independent scene by storm and was now a key figure in the formation of a wrestling company. AEW would reach great success attracting major TV deals as well as a number of licensing contracts which made the company Company extremely lucrative. However, Rhodes ultimately decided to return to WWE in 2022. Rhodes returned to WWE with his AEW character intact and he would be instantly presented as an absolute megastar. Since Rhodes returned to WWE, he has virtually become the top babyface in the company. He often main events live events and he's often at the top of the list when it comes to merch sales. Be sure to leave your comments mm -hmm. down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. Alright, you guys, gonna do it for this reaction. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see y'all in the next one. Toodle.